So check it out, the OBS Bot Meat 2, or OBS Meat 2, which is probably maybe one of the world's smallest 4K webcams right now, which is pretty impressive. It's been made with content creators in mind, whether it's for horizontal YouTube style videos or gaming live streams on Twitch or vertical aspect ratio TikTok and real light content, this camera covers it all. It comes in at around 129 pounds right now, which when compared to other high-end webcams from Elgato and Logitech, isn't really too bad at all, and does come in a number of colors. I've got the gray one here to check out, so let's dive in. So the interesting thing here about the Obspot Me 2 is definitely its size. Now for a webcam, it's absolutely tiny. And although I've not really seen the original Meet webcam, except in videos online, I've got no real frame of reference. Up against my Elgato uh, face cam, it is tiny, which is pretty cool to see. The camera is housed in a small gray metal box measuring 56 by 44 by 32 millimeters with a USB Type-C port on the back of it. And being metal, it's magnetic, so it can stick to the monitor mount easily in a landscape or portrait orientation. Now this is definitely advantageous depending on the type of content that you want to create. And now that OBS has a vertical recording functionality, it makes it very easy to create vertical content for things like TikTok and Instagram Reel. So it's quite easy to change between the two separate orientations. Of course, at the moment you can see me in the landscape orientation, but if I go into the Obspot Center settings up here and go to mode, drop that down to portrait, you can see at the moment, it's got a portrait window in the preview here, but if I rotate that to the left by 90 degrees, there we go, and then I grab the webcam, remove it from the magnetic, um, its magnetic clamp, reattach it to its magnetic clamp, and as you can see, reframe it. I have got a vertical orientation if I wanted to film something like TikTok or Reels or something like that. Now the lens of course is very small, but don't be put off by that. It has got a half inch CMOS sensor with an f1.8 aperture, which helps when capturing shots in low light. And I must say the video quality of this camera is pretty stunning to say the least. It can shoot up to a 4K image, though you can opt to film in 722 at 30 FPS if you haven't got the upload speed for higher resolutions. At the moment, you're seeing a 720p image at 30 FPS. You are now seeing a 1080p image at 30 FPS and you are now seeing a 4K image at 30 FPS. The camera is also capable of a 4X digital zoom and a 79.4 degree or pretty much 80 degree field of view which coming from my Elgato webcam is a little narrow which is a shame to see. You are currently watching the video feed from the OBS Bot Meet 2 webcam and now I've just changed scenes to the Elgato face cam video feed and you can tell that it has a slightly wider field of view. You have got an autofocus and manual focus mode on the Meet 2, but I did opt for autofocus for almost 100% of the time just to ensure I was in focus for as much as possible, which worked well and was very accurate thanks to the phase detect technology. And when I was sitting here streaming and creating content, I didn't have a problem being in focus at all. Though I will say when I was further away from the camera using the auto framing AI feature, focus did become a bit hit and miss. Now just check this out. The biggest issue I found with that was, or the, the auto framing, is the fact that the focus takes a little bit of time to catch up. It doesn't really focus quick enough to keep you fully in focus, like I am now, for example, to keep you fully in focus throughout, the, like, throughout an entire presentation if you're walking back and forth, for example, which is the biggest issue, I think, with that. The OBS bot meet two being the webcam that it is i think literally lends itself to being a sit down at your desk live streaming making content talking to camera type webcam the meet two to get a bit technical right now has a 10 centimeter minimum focus distance which also makes the camera perfect for those top down flat lays if you're someone who likes to document their drawings or unboxings there is a tripod mount to take advantage of as well and it can produce a hdr image which we'll take a look at in a moment and an iso range of 100 to 6400 but do avoid higher 
higher ISOs because things do get a little grainy at the high end. It does have a three stop exposure compensation if you opt for auto exposure and its shutter speed ranges from 1 6400th right down to 1 30th. I kept mine most of the time at 1 60th as I was filming at a lower FPS so I didn't need the extra shutter speed. There are two omnidirectional microphones built into the camera itself but don't use them they are awful just saying the housing is tiny so it's no surprise that the microphones are going to have very limited quality to them. So this is the audio quality that you can come to expect from the built-in omnidirectional microphones on the Obspot Me 2 but if I was to switch over to my microphone setup now, of course, if this isn't anything to do with Obspot, but if you were to pair this webcam with a much higher quality audio captured microphone device, however you wanted to do that, this is the uh, this is the way to go, I think, with this micro with this webcam because the audio quality of the built-in microphones on this webcam. It'll get you through a Teams or a Zoom call with your colleagues, but it's not gonna be able to be used for any kind of content creation because it's just super tinny <laughs> and it just doesn't sound great. If you're going to be using something like this for a live stream, then I guess most people are going to have some kind of microphone set up anyway, like my Wave DX on my desk behind me. So just jumped into a quick game of Overwatch to showcase what this webcam could look like if you are going to be using it for gaming or live streaming, that kind of thing. Now, okay, speaking of my desk and how I'm using it, let's jump over and run through my settings in the Meet 2 software and how I've set it up in OBS. Jumping into the Obspot Center, you're greeted with quite a simple software to get to grips with. It's all within this little panel on the top right-hand side here. First up, let's jump into the global settings where you can find under device management four different devices that you can have plugged in. I've got the Meet 2 as you can see, but other OBSBOT products can be listed here and that correlates with the numbers across the top here to access the settings. Going into my output, I'm running 1080p at 60, although you do have a number of video quality options. Mode is landscape, as I'm recording right now. My bitrate is at high, recording format at MP4. That's if I want to record within the Obspot software. We'll go over that in a moment. Audio settings, if again, for recording purposes, you can set different outputs uh, depending on what you have at the moment. I don't have anything set up because I don't record through this software. I record through o OBS. I've got global hotkeys, uh, OSC settings, and then also some general settings in there. You've got your, across the top, your preview. So I can click that and open a video preview and I can make that as large or as small as I want. And it just makes it easier when fine tuning your image to be able to have a preview there. Uh, on the console, you've got some auto framing options which give you group mode, close up and upper body, depending on how you want to focus yourself. You've got your zoom option, up to four times zoom. There you go, nice and close. Or some preset options on there as well. If you were zoomed in slightly, for example, at medium, Zoom, you have got a gimbal setting to fine tune your positioning of your webcam as well. Second menu, you've got your image settings where you have got a HDR setting grayed out. You've got your focus settings, again, auto focus or manual focus and global or face focus on that. Exposure settings, auto exposure or manual exposure with a shutter speed and ISO settings, but I keep that on auto for now. And then you've got EV compensation here, minus three up to plus three. So again, I do keep that down at uh, just zero or even one. Anti-flicker settings off 50 or 60 hertz. And then also white balance, manual white balance. If you wanted to set that for yourself, I just keep it on auto because it keeps everything easy. Uh, and then image settings. The only thing I've actually changed here at the moment is my contrast at 50, because if I did revert that back down to... Um, oh sorry, at 90, if I did revert that down to 50, then it just looks a little bit washed out. So I do like to keep that at, if I can change it manually, there you go, at 90. Under more, you have got sleep settings and microphone sleep settings as well. Mirror image indicator status, which is for the light on the front of the screen, uh, and then brightness settings on that light as well. The interesting one, let's jump into the beauty settings. So at the moment, I have got a bit of bokeh on at blur level two, but I can increase that if I wanted to. And the software does quite a nice job at cutting you out from the background. But as you can see, 
around my head. It does get a little bit finicky with its cutout. I do keep that on too, just uh, because then the cutout isn't really noticeable and it looks quite smart that way, I think. Retouching is an interesting one. You can do something like this where you can put uh, tone settings, smooth your skin, clarify and slim. So I'm nice and slim now. Uh, but of course, I don't keep that on. You have got a couple of uh, presets on there as well if you wanted to use those, but I keep that off. And filters, which act very much like an Instagram filter where you can switch something on and then change the strength of said filter. And there are a number of filters to, to choose from. Again, I keep that switched off as well. Going across the top panel here, you have got your preview as mentioned. You have got sleep, so it does just turn off the webcam. As you can see, most of the screen's gone dark. So you also do have a record button, which you can record within the OBSBOT center and in the preview. And again, as mentioned, when setting up your audio, you can have some nice audio on there as well. Uh, virtual camera, which I use within OBS. We'll go through that in a moment, but it essentially means my effects are dragged in from uh, the Osport Center into OBS. Uh, you've got your remote control, uh, remote controller. I don't have a remote controller. I'm assuming other products do come with remote controllers, although I've not seen any. And then a couple more settings in here, which I'm not sure what they are for, but I have turned them on and it's done nothing <laughs> on this on this webcam. So to add the OBSBOT Meet to webcam to OBS Studio is extremely easy. If you've already got your scene set up and you've got your list of sources, if you just click the plus key here and then go to video capture device, it's not an existing capture device. So let's create a new one. Whoops, OBS Bot Meet 2. Click OK on there and then it comes up with the properties and you've got to choose a device that you want to target. At the moment, it's got the Elgato camera because that's plugged in. But if you choose the OBS Bot virtual camera, you can see that we are all here, all popped up and then you can position the camera how you would like within your uh, preview window right there. So the OBSBOT or OBS Bot Meet 2 is an extremely easy webcam to use and integrate onto your gaming setup and can produce a decent image if you're going to be using the camera for content creation or even live streaming. Its size is also something to behold being as small as it is and coming from our, my Elgato face cam, the original V1 version, which again features a stunning image too, I can't say that it doesn't, the size is a bit intrusive by comparison. Also, what is great about the Meet 2 is the cost. It's significantly cheaper than the newest Elgato face cam out there and the other streaming related webcams from the likes of Logitech, which is a huge bonus in my book. And it's also very versatile to suit all types of content creation from your landscape shots and streams and YouTube video type content to vertical in-home TikTok and real type content, thanks to the magnetic base on the clamp. Thank you very much for checking out this video review of the OBSPOT Me 2 webcam. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button, subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos, and also let us know in the comments down below what you think about this webcam. Is it something that you would integrate into your gaming setup or content creation or live streams or TikTok videos? Let us know in the comments down below if you're going to be picking one up. As I say, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.